Let's take a look at factoring by grouping. So there's a couple good steps to keep in mind. We're gonna look always for a greatest common factor first. That's always the best thing to do with any factoring problem. Then we're gonna group the first two and the last two terms. We're gonna find the greatest common factor for both binomials and pull that out. Then we're gonna put the greatest common factors together in one parentheses and then the expression that we see twice in another. So let's take a look. We wanna first look for a greatest common factor. So six, three, four, and two do not look like they have anything that we could take out because some of them divide by three and some divide by two, but then it's not consistent. They're not gonna all divide by the same thing. And remember our trick with our calculator, we can go to Desmos and go to functions and find GCD if we wanna check and make sure that we don't have anything we can take out. And indeed we could only take out a one, which we don't ever do that. That's not necessary. So let's go ahead and group the first two terms and the last two terms. Then you wanna take out the greatest common factor from each pair of terms. So I see in this first group, I have six X cubed plus three X squared. Look at your smaller number. So three would come out of six evenly. So I'm gonna take out a three. And then I have X cubed and X squared, which means I can take out X squared because that's the smaller of the two. So let's write that down, 3x squared. And just like we worked on with greatest common factor, you wanna see what would be left over. So six divided by three is two. And then there's three x's in our numerator and two in the denominator. So we'd have one left in the numerator. And then we have three divided by three would be one and x squared divided by x squared would be one. So let's just leave a one. All right, let's look at the second group. When the third term is negative, you always wanna take out a negative. That's a great rule of thumb. And then I see the smaller number is two and four does divide by two evenly. So I'm gonna take out a two, it's gonna be a negative two. And then I see that four X has X, but two does not have an X. So we can't take out any X's. So let's divide by negative two and see what's left. So negative four divided by negative two would be positive two and then that X would be left because it doesn't go away. And then negative two divided by itself would be positive one. So what we see now is important. We need to see that we have two parentheses that match or they are the same. And then we have our greatest common factors we've written out front. So your final factored form needs to put those two together that are the greatest common factors. So they become a binomial together, three X squared, and the minus two. And then the two X plus one that matches, you only wanna write that down one time. And then those are your factors of this polynomial of four terms. So we always use grouping when we have four terms because the other methods wouldn't work. But that's it for example one. Let's try example two. So we have two Z cubed plus Z squared minus 14 Z minus seven. So something you might notice is this term right here has a one in front. So there won't be any other number we could take out since that one only has a one. So there's no need to check for anything else for greatest common factor. So let's go ahead and group the first two and the second two. Then I see in the first two terms, they both have Z and they have two at least in each term. So let's take out Z squared and see what's left over. So if I take out z squared for the first term, I have a two left over, and then three minus two would leave me with one z, and then z squared divided by z squared is just one. So then I factored the first group. Remember on the second group, you wanna take out a negative if that first term is a negative. So I'm definitely gonna divide by a negative. And then 14 and seven, they don't both have z, so I can't take that out but seven would divide evenly into 14. So let's take out that smaller number of negative seven, and then negative 14 divided by negative seven is positive two, and the Z would still be there, and then negative seven divided by negative seven is a positive one. Then check to make sure these two match. It is very important they do, and if not, you'd have to actually regroup your polynomial to try to make them the same. So let's take our greatest common factors and write them together. So z squared minus seven is one factor. 
and then write the one that matches just one time. So 2z plus 1. All right, so let's do two more. For example three, we have 5 and 20 and 6 and 24. So we could see if we could take out a 6 from everything, but then that wouldn't work because 5 doesn't divide evenly by 6. But then factors of 6 could work. So does everything divide evenly by 3? And we would see that 5 does not divide evenly by 3. And then another factor of 6 could be that we have 2. So 2 would also not divide evenly into 5. So we're left with no greatest common factor for everything, but we checked. So let's group the first two and the last two. I see in the first two, my smaller number is five and 20 does divide evenly by five. So I'm gonna take out a five. I can see I have three M's and I have four M's. So I could take out three, the smaller of the two. So let's write that out front, five M cubed. And then in the first term, it would divide evenly by five to give me one and then four minus three, or I have four M's in the numerator and three in the denominator. So the three would cancel out and I just have one left in my numerator. And then I have 20 divided by five would leave me with four. And then those M's would all cancel out. So that's it for the first binomial. And the second one, I have a positive. So this time I'm gonna take out a positive number and then six is the smaller of the two and 24 does divide evenly by six. So let's take that out and see what's left. And 24 does not have an M, so we can't take any M's out this time. So six divided by six is one, but I'm left with M, and 24 divided by six would just be four. And then we wanna check and make sure that these match, and they do, they're both M plus four. And then let's put together the ones that are our greatest common factors. So five M cubed plus six goes together, and then we bring down one of the m plus fours to make our factors. All right, so that's it for number three. Let's take a look at number four. So we have eight, 12, 16, and 24. So let's first check to see, do they all divide by eight? And three of them do, but not the 12. So then we wanna think of, would they divide by factors of eight? So some good factors of eight are two and four. So let's try the greater of those two first. Would they divide by four? Because that would be our greatest if we could. So it does look like all four numbers, 12, 16, 24, and eight, would all divide evenly by four. So that would be a good number to take out first. Then I also see that they do all have a Y, and this last term only has one Y, so we can only take out one, but it is important to go ahead and take all of that greatest common factor out first, and then we'll go from there. So let's take out four Y and see what we have left over. So from eight divided by four, we would have two. Then we have four Y's minus one Y leaves us with three. The next term we have 12 divided by four is three. Then Y cubed divided by Y is like three minus one would be two left over. 16 divided by four is four. And then we have y squared divided by y, which would just be one left over. And then 24 divided by four is six. And then those y's would just cancel out. So we have a greatest common factor this time of four y. You just wanna keep that right there in the front and then group the first two and the last two like we've been doing. So what I like to do is in the meantime, I'm gonna focus on grouping, but I don't wanna forget this greatest common factor of four Y, so I'm gonna make an arrow over there to remind myself that in a minute, I need to bring that down, but not right now, because it might kind of get in my way. So I'm gonna just remind myself with that arrow. So I have two Y cubed plus three Y squared. Two and three don't divide by each other. They're both prime numbers. So let's take out Y but we could take out two y's because three has at least two and then the two has three y's. So that would be possible. So let's take out y squared and then we would be left with two because we didn't divide by anything other than one. And then we had three y's divided by two y's, which would be one left over. 
And then the next term, we have a 3 divided by 1, which is just 3, and then y squared would cancel out. So we're done with that first binomial, the first group. Now let's look at the second group. It has a positive number for the third term in my polynomial, so I'm going to put a positive. And then 4 and 6, they don't divide by each other, but we could take out a 2. So 4 divided by 2 would be 2y or 4y divided by 2 is 2y, and then 6 divided by 2 is 3. And as you work on grouping and you get used to this method, you can kind of also use this as a guide of like, I know that should match, but don't assume that it matches. But just trying to check and see if it's going to make good sense. So what we do this time is since we did not, oh, wait a minute, I need to move this over and put my greatest common factor in the front because we do have a greatest common factor. Okay, so now I've got everything I need. So I'm going to remember I've got this 4y as my greatest common factor. And let me keep my color scheme going. So let's put that in pink. That was the greatest common factor. It goes out front. But then I need to put my greatest common factors in my grouping method together. And then I need to put this one that matches one time. We never write that one twice. So the last part would be 2y plus 3. So it's always important in factoring to remember that all of this would multiply back together to give you your original polynomial. So that's why it's really important not to forget to write the 4y out front or it wouldn't multiply back together again to give you what you started with. All right, so that is it for grouping.